Hey guys, welcome back to Don't Starve, and welcome to my look at Hero in the Dark. Hero in the Dark is a huge mod, that's why I'm not, I'm not calling this a mod spotlight, just because Hero in the Dark is so massive, it's, it's sort of like up and away in that kind of respect. And there's a whole bunch of people working on the mod, there's a huge team, I'll have a, a link in the description to the full list. Um, but the, the lead design and the founder is Kraken121. And basically, Hero in the Dark is a huge overhaul for Don't Starve, it's a big... Uh, sort of Dungeons and Dragons inspired RPG overhaul for Don't Starve, and it adds so much stuff. So, if we if we go to play, I've already got a file there that I was just testing some things out with. Um, so it is compatible with Reign of Giants. First, we'll go to character. Right now, it introduces three, four, five, six characters, and there's planned to be twelve later on. So the first one is the Barbarian. Uh, we've also got the Druid, the Paladin. The Cleric, look at this artwork, that's fantastic. I think that's by Viva La Vie, uh, who I've looked at mods from before. Uh, we've also got the Shadow Knight, he's very fun. And the Wizard. So I played around a bit with the Shadow Knight, but I want to play as the Paladin now. Uh, the Paladin's he's pretty cool, he's a bit, he's a bit tankier, um, and he starts with a nice holy sword. And he can also use shields, so uh, that's pretty useful when you're fighting all the, the new enemies. So yeah, let's take a look with the Paladin. So there he is, and as soon as you spawn in, you're able to rename your character. Um, when when I when I first did this, I had a couple more mods enabled, and Better Console kind of fucks with this a little bit. Um, so if you do want to um, play with this mod, try not to have Better Console activated. So you can just click in here to delete this, and you can name yourself. So I'm going to name myself Uther, after Uther Lightbringer from Hearthstone World of Warcraft. And you just press enter, and you're in. Uh, there's no custom Maxwell intro. So I'll just close up end tools for now, it's quite useful to have it. And up here you've got, we're level 1 with our name, and we've got our XP bar. You can see like so much has changed, you've got like a, a drunk meter I'm pretty sure this is, because you can get drunk in this game. Um, you've got your inventory here, and you've got all these slots here. So you've got your usual tool, weapon, um, sort of body armor, hat, medallion, uh, necklace, jewelry kind of thing. Uh, backpack, ring, boots, and ammo. So I start with my Holy Sword. Right now, I don't think he even has a voice pack. No, he doesn't, and he's got all of Wilson's lines, uh, except for new items that are introduced. Uh, some of them have uh, music, some of them don't. It, this is very early beta, it's just come out on the workshop. So there's still like a fair bit missing, but I just wanted to show it off uh, as quickly as I could, really. So I'll equip the Holy Sword, and that looks beautiful there. One of the, the crazy things about this is it's taken the the full zoom out functionality from RPG HUD and plunked it into here. So you can now zoom out this far just in the game without having RPG HUD on, which is fantastic. So I'm going to show off a couple of the recipes. Uh, I wouldn't recommend having end tools um, on if you if you seriously want to play the mod because it can like get uh, it can crash a couple of things. Uh, interestingly enough, you see I just went up 50 XP when I did that, and if I do like Control F, I also go up another 50. So I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what Control F is like bound to in this mod. I know in Mini Tools it unlocks build like that, but it it's also a like a good debug way of getting 50 XP at a time. So most of the tabs don't add anything new. Um, survival adds quite a few things down at the bottom. You've got all of these down here. You've got tiny scroll case, tiny wand case, small scroll case, small wand case. Uh, so those are all for. Um, Druid and Wizard, but maybe Paladin. Paladin might be able to do some magic. You've also got a potion here, poison spider glands and spider glands, uh, and a wooden barrel with copper bars and boards. Uh, copper you can find down in the caves, uh, although the caves have been changed to a dungeon now. And as of right now, I have no idea where you'd find a poison spider. <laughs> Probably down in the dungeon somewhere. In science, you can build three new machines. You can make a smelter. Uh, with Tenkat Stone, a torch, five lava pebbles. I haven't seen those yet. I think they're really deep in the dungeon, but I could be wrong. Uh, four boards, and forge is a similar recipe. Iron bars, you can also get those in the dungeon. And an alchemy table. Ooh. At the bottom of fights, you can make yourself a nice wooden shield with five boards and five rope. I'm going to make one for the paladin. It doesn't show up on his body or anything, uh, but it will give a bit more defense. In structures, you can make lava walls with four lava bars. And then at the bottom we have the Trader tab. Now, th this acts sort of like, like a Trader NPC, although there's no NPC right now. And you can just trade in 
all sorts of stuff for anything else really. Like you can get meatballs with three copper. Um, but down near the bottom is where you get the interesting stuff. You've got uh, dwarven bags for diamonds. You can also find those in the caves. You can get a star collar staff, recipe book. A health potion, hunger potion, nice. You can get a dwarf bed with just two blue gems. Charcoal for gold, that's quite nice. And here we go, we're getting into the weapons now. So you can get copper stuff with gold, or you can get iron stuff with diamonds. Or you can get steel stuff with, with more diamonds. And then the same for the armor as well. And then you can also buy recipes for these things, so you'll be able to make them yourself. So I'm going to see if I can... I'm going to take the iron sword recipe. I'm going to use that. I don't know if that works properly yet. It doesn't look like that works properly, but that could be because I'm using end tools and, and mods. So, you know, <laughs> just be aware of that. <laughs> so I'm going to get myself a nice steel helm. There we go. And some steel armor. And I look badass. So if we look on the map, uh, firstly we can see a little crockpot chest and a little structure over here. That's something that the orcs have, uh, or the goblins. I think it's orcs? No, it might be orcs. And then you can also see the cave entrance over here, although this is actually the dungeon entrance. And every time I've made a world, this always seems to spawn like fairly close to your starting point. So I started here, and this was just over here, so that's, that's, it's pretty easy to get to. So we're going to go have a look at this first, and then we'll go over to the, the dungeon. Okay, so there's no, no orcs or goblins here. There's the lock chest though, and I can't get into that right now. But we can smash up this... There we go. And it just gave us some rocks. So those have the chance to, to give lots more than just rocks. Unfortunately, we only got rocks from it. All right, time to go have a look at the uh, the dungeon. Some evil flowers. And soon you'll see... There we go. So always by the dungeon entrance, you'll see goblins. Get out of here, goblin. I'm barely taking any damage from all my armor. It's awesome. Oh my god. That is a nice drop. Unknown scroll, I don't think I can learn that. No. I think a mage would probably need that. But I got armor of lesser fire. So we'll equip that and we'll let someone hit us. And they should light on fire. It might be just like a random chance that they'll get lit on fire. Oh well, I'll just kill them. So yeah, these guys can drop armor, they can drop weapons. I think it's fairly uncommon for them to drop uh, armor and weapons. So we were pretty lucky there. He didn't even drop anything. See, that guy's got a little hat on. <laughs> Oh, there we go, that guy lit on fire. Fantastic. And it looks like, I think we gain 25 XP every time we kill one. Yeah, we do. So you can see there's a lot of them. We don't want to deal with a lot of them right now. Oh my god. I don't think I've ever seen this many, actually. That's a huge amount. This guy might drop his hat if, uh, if we kill him. Holy shit, there's so many here. Ow. Please no. Alright, let's go down to the dungeon. Ow. Oh my god. Leave me be, I'm going to the dungeons. Now this mod even changes the loading screen for the caves slash dungeons. It changes the picture, um, and it also changes the text. So we'll see that right here. No, we won't, that's unfortunate. I'll try and go to like the second level of the dungeon so you can see it. But instead of like a bunny man hopping around, it puts a little goblin hopping around, which is awesome. Oh, I forgot to make any, uh, any light things. I need to light hat quickly. There we go. Phew, that was close. Okay, I need to make a bunch of those. I can't believe I forgot that. So yeah, it's just like the caves, it's pitch black down here. And that does mean I can't wear my awesome steel helm. So that kind of sucks. So we're down here now, let's close that up. Actually, we will uh, turn that off. Oh god, you can hear, you can hear goblins. There he is. <laughs> so... <laughs> All the signs like say something different, there's like four different types of signs. So this one says green noses only, this one says only pretty faces be here's, that one says danger, this one says go back now. Oh there we go, so he dropped his little pot hat, which we do not need. Oh god. And you can break all these little structures that you see around here. And that one didn't drop anything. I am taking some damage down here. Alright, let's have a look at the map. So this is what the dungeons look like now. Uh, we've started... Where the hell did we start? We started here. And, um, like, this starting area is always surrounded in, like, a, a square uh, of walls. Now you can see all sorts of interesting stuff on the map now. We've got a locked ornate chest here. We've got... All the chests will be locked. 
Uh, we've got different types of stone that you can mine. There's tons of different ones. Uh, these might just be stalagmites or stalactites, whatever. Uh, we've got this one. Uh, you've got this one here. And potentially that one. No, that's the same as those. So yeah, there's lots of different types of stone. I'll see if I can uh, show all of them off. I'll try at least. But it, you see, it's quite difficult to get around uh, if you haven't revealed the map. You just have to walk around the edge until you see the little land bridge. Off I go. Okay, yeah, so these on the map are just the stalagmites, so we don't have to worry about them too much. Oh, there we go. Look, we can see in there now. These little structures are just, like, randomly generated. You get a goblin hut with, uh, like, one time I saw a bunch of uh, tanning racks. One time it was a bunch of um, crockpots. Anything in here? This is just a... Oh, a chest is open. Oh, no! I got a frost sword, an unknown scroll, and nightmare fuel. Oh, crap. <laughs> That's annoying. Okay, uh, I'll, I will retry that, and I'll get back down there. Okay, there we go. You can see the little goblin hopping around, uh, insinuating the king's stronghold. Uh, that one's not different. It, it's just lots of different text there, which is very clever that they've changed that. All right, we are back. Fantastic. I'm going to make myself invincible, uh, just so it'll be easier. And we'll have a little look around. So I think we need to go... Uh, like, armor and stuff shows up on the map. Uh, so we've got, like, some fire armor, it looks like, there. Uh, that's the way to the second level of the caves, or the dungeon, sorry. Uh, in my in my testing file, I went down three levels, and it was still the same. But I think if you go, like, really deep down, uh, it'll change. So I'm going to try and do that uh, in this video. Alright, so here's one of the structures. This is cool. I don't have a pick. Now I do. And this just drops coal. Uh, that's just a, a little graphical glitch. That's not a problem. Coal, it's just coal right now. Um, I don't actually know what to do with the coal right now. You don't seem to need it for the forge or anything like that. Is this one going to be trapped? So probably. So we'll get the holy sword, open it and it'll spawn things. We just get a dagger of lesser slaying. So I don't really want to deal with these guys, so I'll just hop out there. And they're like, oh, what do? Now I assume this one will still be locked. It might not be though, because when I was first testing it, uh, all the regular chests, oh god, were locked as well. Yeah, so that's locked. I don't know how to get into it. I don't know how to get a key, to be honest. So you can see it just spawns all kinds of cool things. There's a little tall bird nest here. Uh, loads of armor here. I think that's probably steel armor. That's probably quite nice. A nice fire axe or something. Um, loads of farms there. Loads of uh, light plants. It just spawns all kinds of crazy things. The two straps are quite common. So yeah, I'm just going to start heading deeper down into the caves now and see how far we can go. Oh, over here you can see there's a giant bonfire. And that's just a huge fire. Look at how much uh, of a light glow that gives off. It's crazy. Uh, but it's always by goblins. So you have to be careful of those. And the way down to the next level is always hidden by a maze. So I guess you could just bash these down. Oh no, you can't actually. Yes, that's the funny thing about these walls. You cannot just break them down. So you do have to walk around until you find the way into the maze, which is such a cool idea. It gets, it looks really complicated, so it will take you a long time to get down. And I think there's always a bit of Thulacite armor there, which is interesting. So I'm on the fourth level now, and it looks like things are changing a bit. If we look at the map, it's just four little things. And I don't see a way down, actually. We've got these things, though. There's a lot of them. So I'm going to have to explore this place quite a bit, I think. Oh, there's tougher goblins around here. What's this? Oh, a teleporter. Oh. And I think, I think these goblins will actually drop their equipment when you kill them. So it's a nice way of getting like a, a turtle, circle helm. Although he has taken a long fucking time to kill. Magic would be quite useful here, I think. Well, I don't have time to kill him. Let's activate the teleporter. Ooh. So that just teleports us over here, okay. Oh, it's got a sound for it as well. This is an interesting place. How do we go lower? So it looks like this level is the last level of the dungeon. Um, I think you might be able to go deeper. I might have just got like a, a dud dungeon or something. But that's all I'll show off for now because I've already been recording this for half an hour. Um, and that's just with one character. There's five more characters you guys can try. So definitely go have a look at this. Um, I think they are still looking for people to work on the mod, 
So if you've got lots of time available and do really want to invest in the mod, um, then uh, I think you can PM Kraken121, or um, I'll, I'll have a link to the, the whole mod page in the description so you can have a look at that. Uh, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye! Ah! There's a guy trying to get me! <laughs> oh shit! There's a pit! There's a bear in the pit! <laughs> what? <laughs>